women and children have been killed in the Israeli airstrikes on the Gaza Strip. About a dozen people, including children, have been killed on the Israel side. This is the worst conflict between Israel and Palestine since 2014. The borders of Israel are clearly defined, but the boundaries of Palestine are difficult to establish. Theoretically, Palestine includes the West Bank and the Gaza Strip. However, control over this region is complex and constantly evolving. Palestine's history is drenched in bloodshed, displacement and instability. The conflict has lasted for a century now and is nowhere close to a solution. After the defeat of the Ottoman Empire in the First World War, Palestine was placed under the UK administration by the League of Nations in 1922. The land was inhabited by a Jewish minority and an Arab majority. Tension between the two groups grew after international community gave Britain the task of establishing a national home in Palestine for Jewish people. What happened was this. During the British Mandate of Palestine from 1922 to 1947, a huge Jewish influx to this area took place, mainly from Eastern Europe. The numbers kept swelling post the 1930s as millions of Jews fled Nazi persecution to seek a homeland after the brutal Holocaust of the Second World War. Jews considered the entire territory of Israel and Palestine their ancestral home. Their mission to reoccupy it was given global sanction with the British mandate and supported by many countries in the aftermath of the world wars. But Palestinian Arabs also claimed the same land which they had been occupying for generations. The Jewish return to Israel meant the forced eviction of thousands of Palestinian Arabs who were the indigenous occupants of this land. In 1947, the UK turned the Palestine problem over to the United Nations. Ultimately, the UN voted for Palestine to be split into Jewish and Arab states, with Jerusalem becoming an international city. But this wasn't going to end the conflict, and it never did. The native Arabs rejected the UN proposal. Israel, meanwhile, proclaimed itself a state in 1948 and gradually expanded to nearly 77% of the land that was supposed to be Palestine, including a large part of Jerusalem. As soon as Israel started implementing the partition plan, neighboring Arab countries actively tried to prevent the formation of the Israeli state. What followed was war. The 1948 Arab-Israeli war involved Israel and five Arab countries of Jordan, Iraq, Syria, Egypt and Lebanon. By the end of the war in 1949, Israel occupied a major part of the land that was supposed to belong to Palestinians. Jordan occupied the area that came to be known as the West Bank and Egypt occupied Gaza. Jerusalem was eventually divided between Israeli forces in the West and Jordanian forces in the East. Over 700,000 Palestinian Arabs either fled or were expelled and were never allowed to return. War came knocking again in 1967. Decades of political tension built up into six days of all-out military conflict between Israel on one side and Egypt, Syria and Jordan on the other. Israel occupied the territories of the West Bank and Gaza Strip including East Jerusalem. The war led to a second exodus of Palestinians. Hundreds of thousands of Palestinians fled or were forced out of their homes in what they called Al-Nakba or the catastrophe. In the wake of the conflict, the UN Security Council formulated Resolution 242 aimed at establishing a just and lasting peace. It emphasized on Israeli withdrawal from territories occupied in the conflict, termination of all claims or states of belligerency, just settlement of the refugee problems. Five years later, in 1974, the General Assembly reaffirmed the inalienable rights of the Palestinian people to self-determination, national independence, sovereignty and to return. Despite the UN upholding the rights of Palestinian Arabs, neither they nor their descendants have been allowed by Israel to return to their homes. Israel argues that this would overwhelm the country and threaten its existence as a Jewish state. In Arabic, intifada means a rebellion or uprising. 
The first Palestinian intifada against Israel began in December 1987 and ended in September 1993 with the signing of the first Oslo Accords which provided a framework for peace negotiations between Israel and the Palestinians. However, the peace did not last long. In 2002, the second intifada began. One of the triggers was the visit of Ahi El Shahon, the right-wing Jewish Israeli politician, to the Al Aqsa Mosque in Jerusalem, along with Israeli policemen. Palestinian Muslims protested, and seven were killed in the ensuing violence, which marked the start of Intifada Al Aqsa. Soon after, Israel began the construction of a West Bank separation wall, located mostly within the occupied Palestinian territory. This was ruled illegal by the International Court of Justice. The next five years were marked by riots, suicide bombings, and bloodshed. Hamas, a Palestinian militant group that rules the Gaza Strip, was founded in 1987. It was born of the resistance to Israel's occupation of the West Bank and Gaza Strip. It rejects any permanent peace with the Jewish state. In Gaza, Hamas stores weapons in schools. It digs tunnels under mosques and fires rockets from within hospitals. I've seen it. Hezbollah likewise. Hamas took center stage after it opposed the Oslo peace accord signed by Israel and Palestine after the first intifada. It launched several suicide attacks aimed at ensuring the failure of the peace accord in February and March 1996 in a series of suicide bombings Hamas killed nearly 60 Israelis. Hamas's extremist stand and violent playbook found support from a significant section of Palestinians oppressed by years of Israeli dominance. Hamas gained legitimacy in 2006 when it won the Palestinian elections after Israel withdrew its forces from Gaza. The US, the European Union, Israel and Japan consider Hamas a militant group, but it has support from countries like China, Russia, Turkey, Iran and Norway. Israel alleges that Hamas gets a large part of its funding from the Iranian government. Amid the current violence, the commander of elite Quds Force of Iran, General Ismail Khani has assured Hamas of its full support. Israel still occupies the West Bank and claims the whole of Jerusalem as its capital. In 2017, the US backed Israel claims on Jerusalem with former American President Donald Trump officially recognizing Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. He even relocated the American embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. Today we finally acknowledge the obvious that Jerusalem is Israel's capital. He is in total violation of international law, human rights, and he's turning the conflict between Palestinian and Israelis from a political one into a religious one. That's a very dangerous situation. However, Israel has mostly disregarded the international arbitration of what they consider their holy land. Despite the potential for violence, things stayed relatively calm till 2021. Several factors combined to finally boil over into open and sustained violence. The protests were triggered in mid-April when Israel allegedly imposed harsh restrictions on Palestinians including preventing Muslims from gathering on the steps outside the old city to pray during Ramadan as they traditionally did. The conflict escalated on 7th May. The Israeli police reportedly stormed into the Al-Aqsa Mosque in Jerusalem and fired rubber-coated bullets, tear gas and stun grenades at worshippers. Palestinians had already been holding protests against the Sheikh Jarrah evictions. The Israeli aggression in Al-Aqsa Mosque has been seen by many as a retaliation to these protests. Six Palestinian families were forced to give up their homes in Sheikh Jarrah, a neighborhood in East Jerusalem that was given to Israeli settlers. Temperatures ran high as the date for a verdict from Israel's Supreme Court drew near. Clashes intensified on 7th May with the eviction of the families imminent. The conflict is rooted in religion and framed around land but runs far deeper. Palestinian Arabs have limited land rights in Israel. Human rights groups see this as part of Israel's policy of active apartheid and persecution. According to organizations like the Human Rights Watch, Israel is moving towards pushing Muslims out of Jerusalem to preserve a Jewish majority.
Limiting Arab access to land is an effective way of changing the demographics. On 10th May, Hamas issued an ultimatum to Israel to remove its forces from the Al-Aqsa compound and from Sheikh Jarrah, but the warning was ignored. Since then, Hamas has launched more than hundreds of rockets into Israeli territory. Israel also responded with air strikes on Gaza. عليه يجب أن يصدر قرارا عن الأمم المتحدة يقول بعدم شرعية كامل الإجراءات الإسرائيلية بحق أرضنا وشعبنا ثانيا أن يكون هناك إجراءات عقابية ضد دولة الاحتلال ثالثا أن تستدعي الدول الصديقة سفراءها في إسرائيل للتشاور على الأقل تعبيراً عن رفضهم للعدوان الإسرائيلي على أهلنا In June 2014, more rockets were fired from Gaza after Israel arrested many Hamas members across West Bank while searching for three murdered Israeli teenagers. More than 2,000 Palestinians, including 1,462 civilians, were killed during the 50-day conflict. On the Israeli side, 67 soldiers and six civilians were killed. Fighting risks dragging Israelis and Palestinians into a spiral of violence with devastating consequences for those communities and for the entire region. It has the potential to unleash an uncontainable security and humanitarian crisis and to further foster extremism, not only in the occupied Palestinian territory and Israel, but in the region 